So here are five functions. For each of these, your question is, is that in the set big O S log S? See if you can answer this based on your current understanding of it. So the one that has the most yeses is this one, actually. C is about evenly split. I, I guess this confirms that there's enough confusion about this that it's good that we're recapping it. These two, there's high confidence. Our intuition and the definitions tell us that 2s grows no faster than s log s asymptotically. 2s log s, so these two should be clear, but we're still going to look at the definition because our intuition can fail us. There is some disagreement about the best way to define what big O means. This is the definition that we used last class and the one that we will use throughout this class. This is the definition that says we're defining big O. It's defined as a set of functions, and what that set is depends on the function that is inside the O. In order to be in that set, it has to be the case that we can find two constants. One is positive, one is a natural number, so it could be zero. It's not required that n0 is positive, such that this property holds, that f of n, which is the function that's in the set, is always less than or equal to that constant times g of n for all the numbers greater than n0. We'll look at the examples, but first make sure we understand that definition. So if we want to prove that some function is within some big O set, what do we need to do? What's the most likely way to prove that? Yeah. Good. Definition is a there exists. The easiest way to prove a there exists is to construct it, to find them, right? So if we can find choices of C and N0 and then show inequality holds, this is exactly the inequality from the definition, then we're done. So all we've got to do is find those two constants and have an argument that is convincing that that inequality always holds for those choices. But usually once we've chosen C and N0, showing that it always holds should be pretty straightforward. This is just an inequality. That's proving it is in. Well, what if it's the case that now f of n is not in big O g of n? Proving that something doesn't exist is usually harder than proving that it does exist. So how can we prove not in? There are things that we could define that is the complement of this. That is a good strategy to say, well, let's define something that is the set of the complement of this, right, to get the opposite of this definition. And if you can prove that you're in that opposite definition, that would prove you're not in this one but you'd have to be pretty careful about how to define that. It's not just flipping the inequality. What's another strategy we could use to show something doesn't exist? Yeah. Yeah, so if we want to get a contradiction, what would we need to do to get a contradiction? Two things to look at. This there exists. To get a contradiction to there exists, we have to say for all. To know that there do not exist those two constants, we have to show for all possible choices of those constants, that inequality is not satisfied. That means what we're really showing is that for all choices of C and N0 that satisfy these rules, for all of those choices, what do we have to show exists? Yeah, to that. Good. The hard part is the for all C and N0, but once we've done that, all we've got to do is find some N such that F of N is now greater than C of G of N and this has to be an n greater than n0. So that's where the there exists helps us. We've just got to find one n that invalidates the inequality because the inequality has to hold for all n greater than n0. Those are our main proof strategies. Let's test this definition. And this, I think, gets, gets at this question of what would happen if we just tried to flip the inequality. So are there any two functions, two functions f and g, and the question is, is it ever the case that we can find two functions where f is not in big O g of n and g is not in big O of f? So if we think of the definition being flipping the inequality, that should be our intuition would say that's not the case. Out of this context, a less than or equal to, you've got two numbers, either that a is less than or equal to b or b is less than or equal to a. One of those two has to be true. Maybe both are true. If we just use our intuition about this sort of means grows no faster than, our intuition would tell us one of those two has to be true. Can you think of any functions where it's not true? This is a perfectly good function. Is that a perfectly good function? Let's draw another perfectly good function. Is the blue one big O the purple one? In the big O set for the purple one? 
So if the points that are this, the discontinuous, the points where it's zero, if those are the same, then would you say the blue is big O, the purple? Let's say this is zero, this is a thousand. I can't draw there. Actually, now they're the same function. If they're the same function, they're definitely within big O of each other. How can I change the functions so now they're not within big O of each other in either direction? Right, to prove not, all you go is pick one n that violates, for whatever choice of n0 and at c, right, one way to think of these for all and exists is kind of adversarial. Like someone else gets to pick n0 and c, whatever they pick, you can pick an n0 that violates the inequality. Good. Yeah. If we change it so they're not zeros in the same place, we're going to say this is going to be zeros, let's say, at 1,001. Then for the points that are divisible by 1,000, the purple function is always going to be higher. Whatever choice of C and N0, well, we can find some point above N0 where it's higher. And the choice of C doesn't matter because the other one's 0. Right? But in the other direction, well, we just find the point that corresponds to 1,001. And that's going to always be greater on the blue function. And these are not the kinds of functions you're normally happy to deal with, but they're perfectly good functions. There's no requirement that a function can't have points that it behaves strangely at. So there are functions like this. One of the alternate definitions of big O would say, this is kind of silly. To say, because of these like, sparse points, all of a sudden we can't say anything interesting about these functions is kind of bad. The definition that is sometimes used is, instead of this, is to use for all but a finite number. Inequality holds for all but some finite number of points. Does that actually solve the problem here? Yeah, it doesn't solve the problem here because there's infinitely many points where the inequality doesn't hold. At least in this case, it makes the definition more confusing and doesn't even solve our problem. The intuition that it just means grows as fast as is usually useful. It grows, sorry, grows no faster than for big O, but the definition is more precise than that and doesn't always capture that.